Hello, thanks for making time to prepare for the paper two on screen Python test for Edexcel GCSE Computer Science. We're working through page 105 of the revision workbook that you've been given a copy of. If you haven't got your copy of you've lost it, then you can buy it online. We don't get a commission or anything like that. We've just invested in a copy for everyone in year 11. Um, so we can buy it cheaper than you can. If you've lost your copy, get in touch um, and we'll find something suitable for you. So on page 105, um, it has the first question. In the previous video, we worked out how to access all of the files. So hopefully you'll be able to open up um, your folder with all of these um, files in and open it up in Thonny. I'm gonna have Thonny open on one side of my screen and um, the paper on the other side. In your actual paper two exam, you'll have a printed copy of your paper, um, which you can read through and annotate. Um, but it's the files that get submitted. So you want to make sure that if it says save something as, um, then that's what you want to do. I would recommend that you save it as that um, immediately so that you don't change the original file, um, as in you can go back and start again if you break it. So let's go file and save as. Um, and it has to be named exactly um, what you're asked for. So if it says save your amended code, amended just means changed as Q01 underscore finished in caps. Um, I don't know how mean the moderators and the markers are gonna be, um, but you don't wanna make their life difficult by making them search for a file. Um, give it the exact name you asked for. Okay, so don't panic is the first bit of advice. Let's read it through, take it a step at a time, um, and see what we can do. There are 10 marks for this question and you'll be surprised how much you can do even if you don't feel confident at all. So let's start from the, the beginning. A program determines if a customer is entitled to a discount on a meal. A customer is a child with an age between 1 and 13. Inclusive means they can be 1 or they can be 13 but not 14. If they are um, then the meal's half price. If the customer is over 60 years old um, then you get 20% off. So we need to open up this file, which we've done, amend the code to add or complete the lines to create one constant. So the bullet points in your paper always correspond on question one to the comments that you've got here. So we have a comment on line four that says, create a constant named senior and set it to 60. So a constant is just a value that we give a name um, and that name makes your code easier to understand and read. And in um, Python, we use capital letters for, oh, I can't spell senior, I've been a senior moment. And um, we use capital letters to tell Python this is a constant, which is just a reminder to the programmer that says, once you've set it once, you shouldn't ever change it. Um, so that's it. That will be one mark for this, which is great. Then it says create one variable. So if you are actually in the, um, the paper two test, I would tick that um, on here. Then we create a variable, so let's have a look. Global variables, that means a variable you can access from anywhere in your code. Create a variable named age and set it to zero. So we've got the name of the variable and we set it to zero. Everything you need is in the comments. So as long as you're calm enough to read through, it'll be absolutely fine. Accept the user's input and assign it to a variable. So this is the main program now. Ask the user's age and assign it to the variable age. So um, you might be thinking, why on earth did we set it to zero up here? Um, strictly speaking in Python, you don't need to do that. But Edexcel like you to get into the habit of initializing a variable, saying that you're going to have a variable and indicating what data type it's going to be, as in it stores a number. And you'll get a mark for that. So even though it's not necessary, you should do what you're told to do in the comments to get the marks. Um, so we want to ask the question doesn't say exactly what we need to ask, so anything sensible like what is your age or how old are you is how most people would talk. Um, so input is a built-in function. It asks a question and it returns a value that the user types in. That value gets stored, assigned to um, this variable here. Great. So next bullet point. Determine if the customer is entitled to a half-price meal. So here we go, line 20. If age blank one blank age, blank 13. So we're looking for some operators here. Operators are things that perform an operation on values or expressions. So we wanna compare age to one and compare age to 13. So let's remind ourselves what the question means. 
we are a child, if you're between 1 and 13, inclusive. So if the age is greater than or equal to 1, be careful not to do it the other way around. That's not going to work. You write it the way you say it. If it's greater than or equal to 1, and if the age is less than or equal to 13, then we've got a colon, which means the next line is indented and conditional. It only runs if both of those conditions are met. Then we've got a half price meal. That's nice. Uh, what's next? Display an appropriate message for a senior discount. So here we go. Elif, age. Well, what do we need to be for a senior discount? Um, if the customer is over 60, so I think um, that means you're over 60 if you're 60 or over. As soon as you've had your 60th birthday, you are over 60. So that's why I've said greater than or equal to 60. But I suppose there might be some argument for saying over 60 means 61 or above. Um, in the exam, it will be much clearer than this um, paper. Display an appropriate message for a senior discount. OK, so how about... Um, uh, I've got to be sensitive here. People don't like reminding that they're old. Um, you are entitled to a senior discount. There we go. Hopefully that's not too offensive. Make sure this is indented, please, because it should only run if this condition is not true, but this condition is true. That's what elif means. Else if is what it's short for. Do not add any additional functionality. It might sound silly, but you might think of a way to make this even better. Um, uh, but you shouldn't add anything else. What you should do is test it because we've got an error in here that you'll see when we run it. If I put in my age as 61, I'm not that old, by the way, um, then we can't actually run it because we're trying to compare a string and an integer down here. Age should be an integer, but it's currently a string, some text. Why? Because input always returns a string. And if we want to do arithmetic comparative operators, as in comparing numbers, we can only do that with integers. So how do we convert the return value from this to an integer? We use the int function to say whatever the user types in is going to get converted to um, an integer. Let's try it again. Fab. <laughs> I feel like I'm entitled to a senior discount. All right. So in the next video, we're going to go through question two. Um, but do make sure that you save your code at the beginning. Every time you run it, it's going to save the file. So if you write it first and then only rename it at the end, it's going to overwrite the original. And if something goes horribly wrong, you won't be able to undo it. So that's my top tip at the start. Rename it at the start. Take your time. Follow the comments. Tick off the bullet points as you do them and you'll be absolutely fine.